Sometimes after laparoscopic surgery, some patients may have indentations at the site of the trocar incision, and they will be very unhappy with it because it's unsightly, leaves large, I call them sinkholes, uh, divots, indentations at the site of the trocar, and it takes a while to resolve itself, at least a month. So let's examine the cause of what causes it and how can we prevent it. And for today, I'm just going to mostly mention the Carter Thomason because that's what we use most and seems most likely to happen. It may also happen with a WEC, but if it does, the same solution works for both. So let's just look at the Carter Thomason, the way it's designed. It has little, two little holes at the top of the cone, and then this hole will be a diagonal. So when you put your suture passer in, it'll go in this side and come out diagonally on the other side. And here's a side view, and that's the hole in the side that it would come out on this side when it's inserted on the far side. So what causes these indentations? We're going to look at another drawing of it, and I had to draw it because I don't want to do the um, infringement of copyright laws. So you have the suture passer here. Let's say the pink is the der dermis, and then you have the subcutaneous tissue and the muscle that you're going through. Uh, and then at the bottom there you have the fascia. This middle layer here is the scarpus and uh, on the abdominal wall. So that will be important for you to know later on. So you can see in this picture that the Carter Thomason has been passed through the hole on this side and it comes out this side. You're trying to get on the fascia on either side of the incision so that you can tie it. But you can see as this goes through, and especially more so with heavier patients, that it's going to be going through even more tissue. This tissue, of course, is going to vary depending on the size of the patient and how much subcutaneous tissue, how deep their abdominal wall is. So as it goes through, it goes through indiscriminately. It's going through at that angle. It's gonna go through at that angle no matter what. So you're going through and the thread's being pulled through with it and catching the tissue from here where the hole is to down where the fascia is. And then you're gonna do the same on the other side. It's gonna come in this side and come over here to this side to catch this, which is fine. But that means it's also called the scarpus here and the scarpus here. So then when you take the cone out and you have your suture on either side and you go to tie it, that knot is going to pull the scarpus down to the fascia here. And as it pulls it down, it's pulling the skin down too, depending on how deep you have to go, will determine how deep that indentation is that you're creating by pulling the scarpus down with when you're tying on the fascia here. So, okay, you have the indentation, you can't help it, it's gone through the tissue. So what do you do to get rid of it? Once you've tied it, you take a hemostat, and this is one of the doctors I work with, has us do it all the time, uh, regardless of whether you see it or not, because remember when they're laying flat, they may not have an indentation, but it would be there when they stand up because the abdominal tissue is going to shift downward and this scarpus is going to be trapped up here in the incision here and this won't be able to move down with the rest of the abdominal wall. So you get like a muffin top here that comes because it's not shifting with the rest of it. It's caught here and then there'll be an indent below it. And some of them can be quite dramatic. Patients aren't happy with it. So you take you're not, and you tie it tightly, as tightly as you can, cut the suture, or don't cut the suture. The surgeon I work with prevent, prefers that you don't cut the suture until you've released the indentation. Then you take your hemostat through the superficial incision here and put just a little bit of it, um, maybe half a centimeter through under the dermis, just the dermis. You don't need to go deeper than that. You don't want to tunnel or, or make something else bleed. And then you lift up and do it aggressively. You lift up and you'll feel that tissue that's caught under there, you'll feel it release and pop off. You do that to both sides, lifting up really high until you can feel that release itself. And then you'll see the skin will lay better here and won't have that indentation.